Hi, welcome back everybody. It's Mike Newton down here at Lytham Golf Academy. We're back on the MP20 range. I've done my reviews of all three new models, which you can go and check those out on my channel for more in-depth review of each of model, those models. But this video, I'm going to compare each of those three models at the same time. So we've got the MP20 MB, the muscle back, the MP20 MMC, the multi-material construction, and then the MP HMB, the hollow um, bodied uh, club as well. So, going to hit both all seven irons, going to hit all three seven irons, going to compare them and maybe see because obviously Mizuno, a big story is all about blending. These irons are very much uh, um, designed to sort of be able to blend through. So, from the muscle back, you could have muscle back, MMC, and HMB irons all in one set potentially. So, maybe we'll have a little look at that, look at some lofts, and obviously performance through GC Quad as always. Okay, so we'll get underway. I'm going to start off with the blade iron. So typical to see the blade is more of that player's iron, that ultimate tour-inspired golf club. And then moving into the MMC is the next one, which would be a little bit more of some multi-materials going into the head, but still keeping that lovely shape of the MB. And then moving into the HMB, hollow head, more forgiveness, a little bit of a bigger um, sort of size head, but still keeping that very nice sort of shaping for maybe those more forgiving uh, on those miss hits. So going to start off with the muscle back the pure blade and as i said in review it's a stunning looking golf club it's absolutely gorgeous nothing wrong you can really can't fault the way this looks sat down with a golf ball and also just as you look it just looks absolutely stunning um, so i've got myself set up at 170 from the flag this is lofting at 34 degrees so a little bit more truer the other two models are both 32 so there is a loft difference which we'll keep a little eye on let's get this first one hit with the mb that just feels beautiful absolutely beautiful yeah so nice solid hit onto that green very nicely there as you'd expect well not as you'd expect not always a hit the green <laughs> but um yeah nice shot there lovely lovely high towering flight and we know these mbs are more aimed at that Obviously, a skilled player who's generally going to find that middle of the golf club more often than not, um, really aspiring for that ultimate sort of control um, as that ball comes into land. So, definitely not a long hitting golf club. That feels absolutely beautiful. Ah, oh, so good. Just slightly pulled that one. Fortunately, that is me. So, there you go. I have Mr. Green. <laughs> Okay, let's hit one more shot, and we'll move into the MMC. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. It's all over it. Just slightly left. Okay, so there's a few shots hit with the MB, the pure blade, the muscle back. Let's move into the next iron in the MP20 range, the MMC. Okay, so MMC in our hands, um, and just maybe comparing that in terms of that head size, look, shaping, compared to that MBI iron that I've just hit, putting those side by side, they are pretty identical. Probably the only thing that changes is it looks a little bit deeper, as in the height of the club face, but literally fractionally, and as a a fraction thick on that top edge but again literally fractionally it's very very similar i think if if you're blindfolded and somebody just passed you on you took your blindfold off had a look at it didn't know and couldn't see the back of it it'd be very difficult i think to actually split those two irons so again what uh, mizuno is saying is it's a ability to sort of blend these and i think as you transition and maybe go from those long irons and then possibly mmc's going to the mb's and the short irons as you transition you don't want that big jump of how it looks how it's shaped because you feel like then you've got two separate sets of irons in your bag so lofting in now 32 degrees so this is stronger we've got multi materials we've got titanium and tungsten happening in the club head for just to add a little bit of ball speed a little bit more forgiveness Just a little bit on that toe side, didn't quite get all of that. Let's see how that's actually done. Yeah, just missing that left edge of the green, but seems to have carried all the way up there. So I've kept myself at 170. I'm not going to change that. Be interesting to see as we lose the loft, how that's the one I'm sort of interested in is how is that gapping sort of going to change. Okay, 
nice shot just left edge slightly so just going a little bit further again that could be a little bit more through that pull more than anything so just keep those uh, in mind when we look at those numbers I think in terms of that feel as that ball comes off the club face it's pretty much the same as the MB. I don't think it's identical I think we definitely acoustic wise just fractionally different but again it's it's fine margins um, I think it's just with that multi material in there you're just going to get some different acoustics than that traditional full forged head that we see in the MB. That's beautiful, really high tower flight struck that one really well. That's gone a long way, very much middle that one. Pretty much guarantee that ball speed will be higher on that. Just felt absolutely pure that shot. Okay, just quite get all of that, but it still got up there. So a little bit more left biased on those shots with the MMC, just against that MB iron. Okay, so let's switch into the last one, the hollow head construction, which is the HMB. Okay, HMB, hollow head, we've got chromoly in here, we've got uh, grain flow forging through that neck and through the face with the stainless steel body, a bit more hollow, and some internal tungsten there is helping with stability in those long irons, two iron through to seven iron, a uh, little bit of all forgiveness, ease of launch. So very much aimed at the golf who's just needing that little bit of help in launching it, wants that little bit of backup when they're not hitting that middle of the golf club, and uh, but still really wanting that player's look. So it's the hybrid iron with that tour inspired look. Now, don't get me wrong, this is bigger than the muscle back, a little bit longer than that blade length, um, the top edge is a bit thicker, it is tapered a little bit so it doesn't look massively thick but it is a little bit thicker than what you see in the, in the MB uh, but the offset is quite minimal so it's not a big jumping offset which I really do like and the loss don't go stupid strong so staying at 32 degrees for a 7 iron same as the MMC which is 2 degrees stronger than the MB okay first one still 170 out from the flag not changing that let's get this one out Yeah, and that just goes away very, very easily. Good hit from that particular shot. Very tough one today because this wind is howling off the left. So when I see it, it looks very straight. Obviously, you're seeing a bit of a draw on the simulator flight here. That's purely because GC Quad measures closed data in that area of the flight. Obviously, the wind doesn't affect it in that particular part of the flight. So that's a good strike really high sort of ball flight that's peeling so as i visually see that's all over it straight over the top of the flag stopped pretty quick so it's landing from a higher angle there into the green so i think for me i'm predicting sales and proper popularity of these irons i would see a lot of golf was putting the HMB iron in as long iron replacement so I would say a typical blend set would be HMB in maybe that three four possibly five iron moving into MMC from six iron upwards if the golfers would definitely want to put in that muscle back in there there might be a, a three-way combo there so possibly the muscle backs in those wedge nine eight iron moving into MMC seven six maybe five iron and then HMB four iron three iron possibly so Depends how you how it sits with you in terms of what you then got in the bag with hybrids and stuff like that. But that's probably the split I maybe would tend to sort of see a little bit more. And probably the HMB very much more popular in those long iron replacements. Yeah, it just feels really easy. Very, very, I'll just push that one out there. I'm trying not to hit that left shot there. Push that one out, a little bit of a weaker one there. But very very much confidence inspiring you're putting that down behind that golf ball just that little bit longer blade length that top edge you know you've got a bit of meat behind the ball even though you don't see that from the address position you're aware of it it's hollow you sort of know there's that little bit of forgiveness in that club and maybe just lets you swing maybe a little bit freer than what you might do if you don't feel as confident with that smaller head fraction off the bottom but again flight looks very unaffected visually as it's launch and the peak height coming into land okay 
HMB, hollow head, very new one from Mizuno in the MP20 range. But let's go look at some numbers between all three models there and see how they compare to each other. Right, so number times, we've got the MB at the top, row of averages there, MMC, row of averages, uh, HMB, row of averages. So, starting with the blade, the muscle back, 121.7 ball speed, launched at 17.5, spin 6144, carry 1741 as average. So, typical sort of numbers we maybe sort of see, again, you can see that third one, a little bit of a poorer strike, so you drop that spin off, that's the one I hit more left. So we're just gonna bear that in mind, because my left, my miss is a little bit more that left, a little bit overdrawing. When we overdraw it a little bit, it's always gonna pull more spin off, isn't it? So that's where you can clearly see, I missed that 16 yards left, missing the grade, thousand draw spin, and that obviously is gonna pull down my spin number there, so do bear that in mind. Moving into the MMC7 IM, which I've got more draw bias on that, didn't I? I missed that more to the left, pretty much all of them went a little bit uh, to the left of targets. So that is going to pull my spin numbers down. So looking at an average with the MMC 5361, it's quite a lot lower. There's only two degrees difference there, but every single shot I turned over a lot more um, than I did with the MB iron, so that's going to pull that down. So I would probably say if I was a bit more neutral on my ball fly, I would probably expect that to be in the area of 5,800 sort of area as an average, you know, slightly two degrees stronger than the MB. It's going to pull a little spin off, but not as low as what I've seen in this particular test of those four shots of hit. Didn't really get the MMC as good as what I probably could have done. Uh, moving into the HMB, so 122.4, so a bit quicker on that ball speed. Ties in maybe a little bit of crap cremoli in there, um, which does tie into it. 17.4 uh, on that launch, spin 5.869 on average. Again, a couple of little left ones you'll notice there will pull spin down. So the first one was a little bit more left, 5.6. Next one was absolutely arrowed at 6,000. Then a little bit of a right one, 6.1, one, and then back into a left one, pulls the spin back down, 5.5. So look at it as an average, just under that 5.9 area. So decent sort of spin number there for that particular club. Again, probably let that sit, sit in or more around that sort of 6,000 mark, which is good for that hollow construction. We know the loft isn't stupid strong, which is one of the big things I'm pleased about with Mizuno. They haven't gone, right, let's get this into a real powerhouse of an iron. Whiz that loft down to 29 degrees, goes for miles. Um, you know, I think a lot of you guys will probably appreciate that's more in a truer area and ties into what Mazuno are offering in terms of that blending through the sets. So that carried out 174, so quite a tight sort of 171, 173, 174, typically a little bit longer of those, a little bit less lofty ones, but not by much. So again, backs up Mizuno's story that you could start to blend these irons through your set without having massive issues of gapping. Right, okay guys, so there we go, there's all three models of the MP20 range. I'll tell you what, I think Mizuno have done a fantastic job. They never disappoint, do they? They brought out another stunning range, two-year life cycle of the MP18. Probably going to expect these to be in the, in the range for another couple of years, so not switching out quickly, and when they do switch it, I tell you what, they are stunning, aren't they? Right up there again, well done to Mizuno, and I think that introduction to HMBI and that hollow construction, I think he's going to be a real big seller. It's going to tick a lot of boxes for a lot of golfers. Um, I think just for some golfers, Golfers to have the chance to own an MP range of Mizuno irons when maybe their strike pattern wouldn't in the past allow them to go into that MP range. They'll have to stay in that JPX range in terms of the forgiveness. I think that's where that you'll see a lot of transition from that JPX into the MP20. So big thumbs up from Mizuno. Stunning range. Let me know your thoughts as always. You know, love to hear your feedback between those three and which iron do you think you'll be fitting into and would you possibly combo or split them, blend them? If so, which models? Love to hear your feedback as always. If you haven't subscribed, smash that subscribe button. Very much appreciate it. Ring the bell for future notifications. Follow up on social media platforms phones both Instagram and Twitter and the handles there are at NM Golf Coach and hopefully we'll catch up with you all very soon.